Now let's take a look at graphing parabolas. The first graph that you need to be really comfortable with graphing is that of y equals x squared. Now we are going to draw an xy chart to graph this graph the first time, but that will only be for one graph only. We know that 0 squares to 0, and so the point 0, 0 will be on our graph. We also know that 1 and negative 1 each square to 1, so I can plot points at negative 1, 1 and 1, 1. 2 and negative 2 both square to 4, so I can place po graph points at negative 2, 4 and positive 2, 4. And you, as you can see, we are going to have a parabola or U-shaped graph that goes upward forever, and I'm putting these arrows at the top of the graph. Please note that this is smooth and rounded at the bottom. Also notice that the domain of this graph is all real numbers because as the graph goes upward it's also going to the left and the right forever and that the range of this graph is from zero to infinity inclusive of the zero. Now we're being asked to graph y equals 3x squared, 1 half x squared, and negative 2x squared on the same graph. Basically what we're looking at here is graphs of the form y equals ax squared, where a is this leading coefficient. Now when we graphed lines you had y equals mx plus b and m was the slope. a is not the slope here. I like to call it the kind of slope. Now you're not going to see this in any books at all because it really has nothing to do with a linear slope at all. So that's why I've called it the kind of slope. If a is greater than zero, positive, then the parabola is going to open up. If a is less than zero, then the graph opens down. Now the reason I even slightly like to put the word slope in there is because of the word rise and run we are able to consider a rise and run for the first point out only as long as the run is 1. It only works for the first point. And when it's a fraction, you cannot think of a 1 half as rise 1, run 2. It has to be a rise a half, run 1, as we're going to see in a moment. All three of these graphs are going to go through the origin. Now y equals 3x squared is going to rise 3 and run 1 to the right, and because of symmetry it's going to run rise 3 and then run 1 to the left also. So that would be the graph of y equals 3x squared. For y equals 1 half x squared, I just mentioned a moment ago that we can rise a half and then run 1 and get two points on our graph that way, so you can tell that this is going to open a whole lot wider than your standard parabola, which actually is going to be right in here, which I'm drawing with the dotted line going through 1, 1 and negative 1, 1. And if I have y equals negative 2x squared, my kind of slope negative 2 tells me to go down 2 and over 1. And again, that only works for the first point out. It does not work any further out because if I went down 2 and over 1 again, notice I'd have a linear sort of absolute value looking graph going through those two points, which is not the case. In general, when we're graphing parabolas, we have this general formula here. This is the shortcut method for how to graph parabolas. We've already talked about A, which is our kind of slope and controls the direction of opening. So it'll be controlling our narrowness and our whether it opens up or down. But now we're adding into this another aspect, which is the vertex. The vertex is going to be located at H comma K. Notice how K is already positive in this form. But h is inside this x minus h squared. You're always going to be changing the sign of h when we're going to write the vertex. Now there's two other features we need, and if we've identified h comma k, then it's pretty much already found. The axis of symmetry. Your axis of symmetry is going to be a line that you can draw through the vertex that pretty much cuts the parabola in half. This will be the equation x equals h. And 
there will be a maximum or minimum value at y equals k. I'm just going to write k here because it's the value k, whereas x equals h is an equation of a line. When your parabola opens upward, you will have a minimum value, and when your parabola opens downward, you will have a maximum value.